Hello everyone. This video tutorial is about 3D truss analysis in ANSYS Workbench. That is a 3D truss which I'm going to analyze in ANSYS. So that is a problem description. A three-dimensional truss is shown in the figure. All members are made of aluminum with a modulus of velocity 10.6 in front rate per 6 psi and a Poisson's ratio of 0.3 and a cross-sectional area of 1.56 inch square and then I'm going to assume square cross-section with side as 1.249 inch. The coordinates of the joints with respect to the coordinate system shown in this figure are given in feet. So that is a coordinate system origin here and then for three joints one two three and four so their coordinates are given and then the boundary conditions like which type of sports or which displacements are restricted so they are shown for this joint one four and three so need to determine deflection of all joints the deflection of all joints, axial forces and stresses in all members under the loading shown in the figure. So this uh, 3D truss in an example of chapter number three trusses of the book Finite Element Analysis Theory and Application with ANSYS by Saeed Mewani, fourth edition. So this one is uh, example 3.3 from chapter three process chapter 3 process and from the book finite element analysis theory and application with ANSYS fourth edition so if you want to analyze 2d truss so in my channel in the playlist ANSYS workbench structural analysis you can find videos about 2d truss analysis in ANSYS workbench as well so here are steps for analysis of 3d truss in ansys workbench the first one need to start a static structural project then add material for that part and the third one select analysis type and then is uh, in design modeler geomet in the design modeler sketch that geometry first points then connect those lines and then add cross section then in the model assign material to the geometry then mesh then is the uh, selection of nodes and element for to calculate that results then in the static structure to apply boundary conditions then to apply loads in that and then in the solution need to request total deformation then axial force and then normal stress and to solve it and in the result to visualize that or to get that deformation axial force and normal stress so these are steps or that are the highlights of that this video tutorial so the first step is to start static structural project in workbench so that is a workbench and I'm using that 2020 version of it. So here in the analysis system, uh, there are different analysis and I'm going for static structural. I am going to double click on that and here you'll have that static structural. So I'm going to save it in somewhere in computer. So I saved that as cross 3D example 3.3 in the computer. Uh, in any drive. Next step is to add uh, in engineering data, need to add material. Material is aluminum and modulus of elasticity and Poisson's ratio, they are 10.56 in 10 raised power 6 and then 0.3. In workbench, it is a linear elastic and isotropic elasticity and then modulus of elasticity and Poisson's ratio. So I am going here in engineering data, double click on that. So although aluminum will be, will be in the material library 
and I am going to create a new one aluminium and then for aluminium in the linear elastic isotropic elasticity just drag it here and then you have here Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio and for Young's modulus its units are PSI so it is 10.6 into 10 to the raised power 6 and then Poisson's ratio is 0.3 so I am going to save it and then close it. I have saved the material and then close it and then you can see that there is a take on engineering data. Next step is the geometry and you need to select analysis type and basic geometry option that is a line bodies and analysis type is 3. So in the workbench click on geometry here you have line bodies and then analysis type is 3D. Next step is to sketch that in the design modeler. So for that one here right click on geometry and then new design modeler geometry it will take some time so that is the design modeler so in that design modeler need to sketch that and the first one is need to create point give the definition manual input and then generate point so there are four points here the one is the first one its coordinate are 003 feet the second one is 600 zero zero feet, the third one 00 zero zero minus 3 feet, and the fourth one 060 zero zero feet. So for design modeler here, so there's no need of any plane, so just click on point. So that is the point, and then the construction point, and then the definition. The definition is manual input, and then the coordinates. So first point, its coordinate are 0, 0 and 3. So click on that and then generate that. So that is point 1. It is somewhere there with 0, 0, 3. And the next one is again, click on point and definition here, type construction point. Then it is manual input and its coordinate are 6, 0, 0. But before that, I missed something. Before starting, you need to change units and first let me create generate that point. So that second point. So the units should be in feet. So that is before generating point, you need to change the unit to feet. So now the point one again, it is three. So I have to generate that and then point two, it is six. So generate. So that is the first thing you need to change units into the feet, and then you need to create those points. So I'm going to create the rest of the points. So I have created three points. That is a point one zero zero three. Point two is six zero zero. Point three is zero zero minus three, and that's a point four. So these are the points one two three four. So all these points are created. Next one is need to join uh, points. And for that one, go to concept, lines from points, select two points, and then generate. So in the design modeler here, in the concept, concept, so line from points, and then it says that here, so point, segment, so I am going to select point one and point two apply and generate and then you can see that that is the first line generated so again concept line from points and then i am going to join point one with point three apply generate and here is a line two i'm going to repeat that one again so concept line from points I'm going to join first point and fourth point, apply, generate. So that here I have created three lines. So by joining one point to check it, point two, point three, and point four. So in the similar way, I'm going to create other lines. So now the lines are created. 
by joining these points and then six lines were created by joining these points as you can see that one two three four five six there were six lines there next step is to create cross section and cross section is square so for that one concept here cross section and then rectangular and i'm going to change the units for that so unit because it is in inches so i am going to go in inches and then the cross section is 1.249 and then 1.249 and so that is cross section so with that the cross sectional area is 1.56 so here the cross sectional area is 1.56 inches and i have assumed a square cross section for that which side 1.249 so each side is 1.249 and then it's the total cross sectional area is 1.56 so then that is rectangular i'm going to rename and then innovate So now that rectangular cross section is being created. So next one is a line body created. So need to assign cross section rectangular to that and then innovate it. So here is in the part, in the part there is a line body. Click on that and this is cross section not selected. So you need to select rectangular and then generate that. Okay, so now a line body is being generated. So line body, and then here in the box select, select that one. Okay, and then generate that. So that is now uh, body created. So you can go view, and then cross section solid. And with that rotation, you can see the cross section. A rectangular cross section is assigned so now i'm going to save that one and closing that design modeler next step is in the model I need to start model here double click on the model so it will take some time to open that model and you will have here so with the rotation so that is the model now the first step in the model need to go to geometry and then need to assign material and model type as a link or truss so in the geometry click on that so here material is structural steel so need to change it to aluminium and then here in the model type in the definition model type instead of beam change it to link truss and then on the home need to change units and units this time i am going to use that as us customary a inch and then pound inch pound that is the units we need to use so in the line geometry need to change material and then model type as link and then need to change units next step is to mesh and for the mesh need to assign one element between two nodes and then sizing geometry select edges and then here that is the mesh so if i just click on mesh generate so that is the default meshing but i don't want that i just want to keep one element between two nodes so for that purpose click on sizing here on sizing and it say geometry selection and with select box selection i am going to select that geometry so and then apply so here 
uh, edge click on edge and then box selection so here apply so edges are being selected and then type type we need to select here number of divisions and just one division here and leave that rest so now you can see that there is only one element between the nodes so now we need to generate a new mesh so in the new mesh now you can see in the new mesh there is only one element so in the display preference so you can see node number and element type so element type in green is so they are going somewhere around so i am just going to see here nodes so in between nodes so there are only one element so the next one is create name selection for nodes and then for elements for that one need to go here because there are if you click on mesh statistics so there are six elements and it says 10 nodes do not so there are six elements and four nodes so for that one here in the selection mesh id by nodes so one to four and i'm going to select and you can see that these turn green so create a name selection so in the name selection that is a selection so i am going to rename that as nodes and then for elements one to six elements select you can see that they turn green and then create name selection and here you have i am going to rename that as elements okay so close that so now you have created nodes so here you can see that nodes and then elements so these are the elements and then the nodes and elements they are now selected next step is in the static structural you need to apply boundary condition and for that one in the environment go to sports and then displacement and scoping method in geometry select a vertex so now next one here in the static structural so in the environment go to sport and in sports click on displacement i am going to use that one because for that first node all displacements are given for the second one nothing given for the third one ux is equal to zero and for the fourth one ux and uy is zero so i'm going to apply that to node one so now here is a geometry selection so for the geometry selection first select vertex and then i'm going to select that box selection and then here is that is the vertex one x one you need i'm going to set as constant constant and then z also as constant okay and then oh sorry geometry selected and applied so that is the and then i am going to displacement as one vertex so that is for the first one it's done and then for the fourth one x and y are zero and that is here so again i can right click on that insert and in insert you can find out here somewhere as a displacement so again here vertex and then box selection for that apply it and x and y they are zero and i'm going to rename that as displacement at node 4 so similarly i'm going to create the next one displacement and for this node now here ux is equal to zero so that is ux equal zero and i'm going to rename that as three so now at node one once again at node one so all displacements are set as zero at node one all displacements set as zero at node three 
only x is 0 at node 3, only x is 0, rest are free, and at node 4, ux and uy are 0, and at node 4, ux and uy are 0. Next step in the static structural need to apply load, and for that one, environment, load, force, the components, and the scoping method is geometry and vertex. Only load is being applied at node 2, which is in negative y direction, so which is 200 pound. So for that one, need to go here, click on static structural, environment, and then here are loads in that load force and geometry selection that on that vertex, so select that vertex with the box selection that one, apply, and then here define by change it to vector to components and then only in y direction so that is minus 200 pounds so that is minus 200 pound and then you can see it is here so in the 3d you can see that and then force i am going to rename that as force y so that is being applied the next one in the solution need to request or need to add parameters in the solution and the first one I am going to add that total deformation and for that one click on solution and then here you have total deformation so that is the total deformation in all that so for that one determine the deflection of all joints so deflection in x y and z for all joints so for that one here need to go to directional uh, deformation directional so i am going to select it as three so directional in x direction then in y direction and then in z direction you are deformation directional scoping method is a name selection and orientation need to name that axis so for that one here first is Scoping method is a name selection and in the name selection I want to add nodes and then along x axis. Similarly for y, the matrix selection is a name selection and then I have already created nodes for that and here is y axis. And then finally here the matrix selection is node selection, name selection, nodes and then here you have and in the z axis so now uh, x y and z so the deformation in x y and z direction for all that nodes is now selected now the next one for axial force need to go to beam results and axial force for all members need to request and for that one solution and then you have beam results here and axial force and axial force so geometry selection is the name selection and then for all elements that is requested so axial force for all elements is requested the next one is a stress and normal stress for all member is request uh, need to add it in the solution so for that one again solution and then here are the stresses but you can see that the stresses are not present there and for, then what to do go to solution information in the solution information go to beam section results so here in the solution beam section results and click yes and now stresses normal stresses and normal stresses on all members so name selection and then element so the next one when all parameters are requested in the solution then is a solve and it's simple just click on the solution and then solve it and it will take some time to solve that so it's solve there's a green tick on all those parameters the next one is results and in results need to check that directional deformation and for that one 
here is a total deformation that is a total deformation and the maximum is 3.197 and the minimum is 0 so because it's example from the book so i can check the results from the book so in the book here you can see that total maximum value is 3.197 and this value is 3.1974 so which is very very close to the book and then similarly ux uy and uz the directional ones so here is the directional is the value for that is minus 6 so that is minus 6.6 .6. And then for y, it is value is minus 3.12. And here you can see 3.12 into 10 to raise, it is in 10 to raise power minus 2. And then u z is 2.17. And then here for the z, it's 2.17. And at a specific node, it is possible to get the value at specific node by probe with the probe you can find out that at maximum or otherwise otherwise it is possible to create that uh, to export that export text file and then export text file and then that text file will give so the next result is xcl4 and for that one here are xcl4 and it is requested for the xcl4 is requested for uh, all members so i can check the maximum value of that minimum value of that and then with the probe i can find in all the members so in those two excel force is zero here is 50 there minus 11.8 minus 11.8 and then 282.84 and the values of these one in the book they are also mentioned and here are the value 50 my uh, in the two member is zero in one member is 50 in two members is minus 111.8 and in one is 282.84 and that is the value exactly which are in the members Next step is the normal stress and for that normal stress here again that is the normal stress and then to probe for each member the so normal stress that will be very much similar to axial stress and in the two member is 0 in one member is 32 next is minus 71 and in one member is 181 so here you can see and that are exactly from the whatever are the values in the book so this way or, or you can obviously you can export text file for all those requested members so that is all done and once again summary of that you need to start a static, static structural project then you need to add materials then in geometry, need, uh, I am using it that design modeler uh, to perform that geometry. First, need to create construction point and then need to join those construction point and then need to add a rectangular cross section. Then in the model, in the geometry, need to assign material and then model type from beam, it is link or truss, and then need to apply mesh and remember that for. Uh, for trusses uh, like in the finite element method theory so for trusses uh, only one element is selected between the nodes so and then this selection is not necessary uh, but if you need that so then create a uh, name selection for nodes and elements then need to go to setup and in the static structure need to apply boundary condition and here I have selected displacement and then simply supported or fix can be selected then need to apply loads and for that one force and components I am using that one 
and in the solution there are so many other parameters can be added but here i have selected only deflection axial forces and normal stresses and then need to solve that and need to get the results of all those thank you very much for watching i hope that you like this video so you can leave comments for feedback and please subscribe for other videos